Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Salt Mines, where we watch people melt down in real time. As, of course, the most competitive real-time strategy game in the world, StarCraft 2, results in people just falling apart mentally and then slowly trying to rebuild themselves by reconstructing reality around them in their own imagination and, of course, broadcasting that to their opponent for our entertainment. In the top right, we've got representing Clan Spains. It is Moha up against a Napole Cochon. Cochon, I'm pretty sure, is pig in, uh, in French. Napole, I don't know if that's short for Napoleon. Napoleon the pig, maybe, versus Moha. It is a Protoss versus Zerg matchup. Looks like just a standard low ground gateway and it's gonna try and block the expansion is Cochon. Turn around, oh, there's the drone. Oh, he's gonna go for the block. Okay, Cochon's being an annoying Protoss player, but oh, he turns around. Moha could go back and build that, but looks like the probe doubles back. Oh, he's being a bit of a nuisance, isn't he? But look at that. Oh, Moha goes past. Moha could get it down, but oh, Moha's already committed to the third base location. Does need to get back to spending those drones right now. He's going to go very quick spawning pool here is Moha. So Moha uh, definitely doing a bit of an oddball opening. It's floating three lava. There we go. Drones do start up behind it. It looks like, oh, a two gate opening here for Nepal. Okie dokie. Okay, so two gate opening uh, is pretty aggressive. Oh, that's a lovely wall off. Very thick choke point between these two buildings. That's a two spaces overlapped wall off. It's funny because I see so many pros mess up their wall on this map. And here is Mr. Cochon. Well, I, I assume Mr. Could be a lady. Ladies like pigs as well. Um, pigs are one of the fantastic, most fantastic animals in the world. Second pylon on the way. This delays the Nexus a long time though. So... Moho could defend quite well, but Moho's going really quick third hatch. This is a super greedy opening, and the drone count isn't quite there, so Moha needs to get a move on with building drones. Also, the Overlord didn't actually go to the natural, so Moha doesn't know that this is a two-gate opening, and in fact, it's not just two-gate, it's two-gate adept with double chronos. So this is going to be about as fast as two adepts could possibly reach you on your side of the map. There is link speed on the way, yet for some reason, Moha's taking a second gas. There's no reason why you would ever want a second gas this early, most players would even pull off mining the first gas after starting link speed and send those down. No queens or zerglings started up just yet. Oh, what is Moha's? Moha's opening is really bad. Oh, this is not good at all. Oh, man. Taking a quick third in general is dangerous, but uh, to not build queens or zerglings, this is not a good opening at all. A spine crawl is going to build in the third. But that means the main is wide open. Nepal is going to scout off to the left side. A bit of an odd shade there. Definitely should probably be shading forwards, but continues on. Still no queen. He's building spines in each mineral line. Oh my god. These adepts are going to have an absolute party. Ah, uh, Moha needs to run the drones away, but that spine is nowhere near finished. And good adept micro so far. Looks like a nexus and more probes coming up behind it. But Kashan is getting so much damage. The drones should probably try and surround these adepts. You can see the adepts are just mincing. This worker line so far. A couple of drones try to fight. Oh man, this is this is not it. The whole point is you're meant to have queens up hitting these adepts the whole time, and that puts the timer on the adepts. And if they try to run past the queens, then the zerglings can engage. But in this scenario, there's just nothing to deal with the adepts. Two zerglings with link speed. The drones just running around so lost right now. Oh my lord. And Moha's trying to build another queen and some more links. Says, get cancer! Yep, I mean, uh, that's it. I mean, that is an incredibly greedy opening. And going straight for spine crawlers with 180 APM as well. Not a lot of fundamentals. It's weird because I, I feel like this is a Diamond League game. Because Nepal's kind of doing decently fine, like low diamond. But I, I feel like this is a diamond game. And for some reason, Moha's just like, I'm going to try this new build where I get three hatcheries and build a spine crawler in each worker line, which is... So, so poor, but uh, it ends up very far behind there. Not too happy. The old get cancer on the screen. Twilight Council comes up behind this for Nepal. Nepal Cushon is going to be going for two bases. Is that basically double the workers? Moha right now has six idle lava, no money to spend it, and decides a lair is the way to get back into this game. So definitely got to be critical of decision making going on for Moha right now, where Moha should be doing nothing but building drones for the next minute and then try to do the next step of this game. An oracle is going to come out very shortly. There is no answer to an oracle. There's one queen, which an oracle beats in a fight. No spore crawlers. Dio of cancer, please, says Moha. Moha seeing the third base. Apparently not too happy about that. <laughs> Stupid race. 
Stupid retard. Wow. Mora's, uh, yeah, having a bit of a time. And is now saying, Levy, leave. Levy, leave by the Levy, you monkey. You monkey? So these are, I like this because this is like very antiquated. I feel like Moha has uh, basically been frozen in an ice cube uh, from 2003. We've just melted him out and uh, apparently he's just like, get cancer, monkey, monkey, retard, monkey, monkey, you know, get, it's just like, okay, it's, eh. it, it's not the most creative insults. I'm going to give Moha a three out of 10 in 2022 rating. If it was 2003, I'd give you a higher rating. Moha now absolutely in tatters, attacking their own hatchery, getting a burrow upgrade as well as 14 zerglings against a guy who's on three base. Uh, Kashan's on three base and you're like, I need burrow right now. Now the crazy thing is Kashan has so few units, you actually might have been able to do some sort of counter all in and actually win the game. But now you're giving it them enough time to get blink, plus one, robo, mass gateways and saturating a third base at the same time. It's going to try a Nidus Queen zergling attack. I mean, yeah, maybe if they went for it a bit quicker. Good luck, have fun! <laughs> Kishon didn't respond or engage at all with any of the bad manner in the whining, but then just throws down the second good luck, have fun of the game. Oh my lordy lord, that is quite hilarious way. Nothing makes them angry more than giving them good manners, man. The queens and the lings are going to try to come in. Where is the knight is going to go up back here at the third? It's going to get killed before it even goes upright. This overlord is not in range. It's moving it forward. Here we go. Okay, Knight is going up in the main base. Kashan dealing with this Overlord, but does Kashan know about the, the Knight is in the main? Uh-oh, there's going to be a lot of Zerglings popping out, and Kashan doesn't actually have that many units. No battery in the main either. A lot of these gateways, three gateways powered by that main pylon. That pylon is a prime target. Uh-oh, Kashan really needs to get warping in it. Oh no, the unit in the wall's blocking him, but he does move it. Okay, Kashan's moving up here. Those three gateways deep power. That means there's only two gates and a robo right now. Not a lot of unit production available, but Zerglings cannot gauge underneath those Oracle lasers. The Stalkers blink forward. Oh no. Oh no, Kushan, what are you doing? Oh no, Kushan, not defending this very well. Should be building more batteries and so on, but oh man. Okay, some more gateways finished on the third base, which means there are some more gateways available. It looks like the Oracles are doing too much damage. They've already killed 23 Zerglings. There's just so few units available. If Moha hadn't been busy crying and it actually rebuilt the economy faster, this could have worked. This absolutely could have worked, but with battery overcharge in the back of this base, these Stalkers will now be basically untouched. Probes in the natural defend those Zerglings, take those ones down. The Queens are getting pushed back. One Queen goes down, the other ones do escape. The Nidus Worm's gonna fall here and it looks like these uh, Creep Tumors will go down as well. Still one Tumor that hasn't spread yet. But a simple revelation should deal with most of them. Barely misses the one on the top. Gert Cancer, says Moha. Moha bringing out the high level insults. I mean, this is kind of adorable. This is probably gonna, this is gonna be our last salt mines for 2022. It's been a fun get, getting go of the show. And I feel like we're going full circle here and starting off our final show with just the most basic of desperate whining. And, and I like it. There's something about which it would go, yeah, you are a poo poo face. You retard, and you're like, oh, really? Are we okay? Like, <laughs> not particularly insulted by this, but all right. <laughs> it's like <laughs> these, these aren't high class insults. They're not original, and they're definitely not striking at the heart of uh, Kushan's pride. Uh, prize? Pride. I think pride is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, Depths coming in 60 probes versus 27 workers. I don't know why Moha is still in the game. So here's a hot tip, gang. If, if you fall way behind by screwing up and not being safe and then your opponent defends your all in well it was an all in you should probably leave moha though is one of these players that likes to stay in a game that they're already frustrated in getting angrier and angrier going look at how unfair it is it's not good for your sanity it's it's really not stalkers go in the main a bit random warping stalkers in the main blinking into a zell a spine crawler zergen surround not the best way to use stalkers but the stalkers on the third will take him out moha doesn't GG? Can you believe it? No GG. Who would have ever thought? Uh, what a beautiful opening from Moha. Three hatcheries and didn't start a single queen by the three minute 20 mark. Probably the worst opening I've seen in a little... Well, I mean, I say that all the time. Um, but for the skill level, because it looked like Kashan was playing Diamond League StarCraft. Pretty bad opening for Diamond League for Moha, i got to say. And not scouting with your overlord to see the two gates. Like, I didn't scout and I was super greedy and I got punished. This game's stupid and you play this stupid monkey race. Yep, that, that about adds up.
Alright, okay, going into the next game. Up here we've got a Fleur de Lis. Now, Fleur, that's got to be flower in French. Uh, I, I, I admit, I did just Google the other part, though. Apparently, I believe this is lily flower. So, a lily. Nice flower. Up here in the top right, lovely Zerg player. And Zerg buildings are themselves kind of like lovely flowers if you add spikes, hot steam, and mucus. So, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a Zerg versus Zerg up against Straw Baby in the bottom left side of the map. So Straw Baby here going for a standard Overlord, whereas it's a 14 gas, 14 pool. So for, for, for Lily Flower in the top right, Fleur de Lis, uh, they're actually going for that, but they've forgotten to build drones after building that. And now they're building an Overlord on 13. My god, what? Okay, please build it. Okay, at least they're building a drone after. So they're going to do a very aggressive opening, but not as aggressive as like the, the quickest one base all ends. Straw Baby, on the other hand, in the bottom left, representing my clan, by the way. Pig 2. You might wonder, why does it sometimes pig's pan? Why is it otherwise pig 2? It's because you can only fit 100 members in a clan. So, we do have two different clan tags. We have pig pan and uh, pig 2 as well. Now, Straw Baby's just going pool hatch. Pretty straightforward opening. Probably go for a gas right after that. Unless they want to play gasless. Straw Baby might be a gasless uh, queen roach uh, spine crawler sort of opening player. Straw Baby's forgetting to build drones. Oh my lord, please build drones. Straw Baby. Okay, there we go. A drone and an extracted L stuff. Because remember, whenever a hatchery has three lava sitting at it, it's not producing more lava. So you're basically just losing production for no good reason. There we go. Four Zerglings will come out. Fleur de Lis is going a very quick link speed, building a drone. But for some reason, that drone's just chilling there. Now, wait, 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 wait. Now you're going for a hatchery. Oh, this is not a good opening. No, no, no. And Fleur once again sitting with three lava. They've been losing so much production. Fleur should be building Zerglings nonstop to prepare for what is clearly a Link Flood strategy. But Fleur is not building Zerglings. Is going for two queens, a hatchery, and not spending their lava. I mean, this is just lacking fundamentals. You're doing a Link Speed rush. You forgot to make Zerglings for it. There's now some Zerglings coming. They just cancelled one of their own uh, things they had in production. They're now building some Zerglings. Okay. So I think they, they've seen the Zerglings coming and they think they're being attacked. But realistically, they've done a way less economic and more aggressive opening. They've just done it so poorly that they're finding themselves on the defensive versus a more solid opening from Straw Baby. Now, Straw Baby also a little slow to inject there. There we go. Inject does go down. This Ling pressure should not engage. They should just run away. The Queens and the Lings for Fleur de Lis easily going to shut this down. Oh, bad move by Straw Baby to attack there. But only loses one Zergling. Uh-oh, Ling speed. Oh, Straw Baby's going to have to just fight it out. Oh, Fleur. Oh my god, Fleur de Lis had targeted an individual Zergling. Fleur de Lis did an A move. They right-clicked on a single Zergling, so all the Lings were derping around trying to attack one Ling rather than just A moving. Fleur de Lis with some exceptionally bad micromanagement. Remember, you'd be better off just attack moving most of the time. Also, is building a spine crawler for some reason. Fleur de Lis not understanding that when you do a super aggressive opening strategy, you need to actually build fighting units and go kill your opponent with it. So it's finding yourself in a bit of a weird scenario. Ling's coming forward. The queen could potentially fight this. Uh, remember, speedlings are better than slowlings, but not if they're outnumbered two to one. The slowlings are actually doing massive damage right now. Link speed and a rally of slowlings coming across the map. This is so derpy. It's just 10 slow zerglings running across the map. Straw Baby has three queens up and their link speed will finish in about 30 seconds. Straw Baby is, is doing the most nonsense attacks I've seen in a while. Yet Fleur de Lis keeps running way less zerglings in and choosing to fight when there's no reason to fight. Uh, honestly, whoever just holds the drone key down and sits at home earlier should win this game. Oh no, the queen up front! Fleur de Lis doesn't pull back the super healthy, the, the super high energy queen. Oh, that was a very bad attack for Straw Baby though. Straw Baby's now making a Baneling Nest and more drones. I feel like Straw Baby's just producing way better than Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis does get six more drones, so he's going to start catching up while doing a bit of a Ling pressure. This game is seesawing back and forth in pure chaos. It is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we've got four Lings coming forward there for Straw Baby. So Straw Baby does lose one of them. Luckily pulls back though. Fleur de Lis is going to try and fight this. Good fights for Fleur de Lis now. Having the extra Zerglings on the map. But a Banely Nest and more Lings are on the way for Straw Baby. Both sides are relatively equal in workers. This game could go either way. I love watching low level ZVZ because it's so random. Because neither player really does stuff that makes sense. It's, it's just, it's kind of hilarious because... Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, ooh, okay, spine crawlers on the way. A bunch more zerglings as well. Another spine crawler. I think with a second spine, the problem is these spines are so close together. Banelings could blow both of them up. You want these spines to be spread apart more. 
But if you bring all three queens to the front, or I guess it's only two now since one of them died, you could easily defend this. No Overlord sitting outside the base. This Overlord is going past, which means you're not going to see the Baneling morph. But Strawbaby, uh-oh, almost runs in before the Banelings are even finished morphing. Uh-oh. Strawberry is taking more drones. There will be a macro hatch up for Fleur. Fleur at least, though, clumping the spines up so much. This is really bad wall off. You never want spines in the wall off. You want them behind the wall because an Evo Chamber has 70, 750 hit points. A spine only has 300. And with no Banelings, oh, this could be a disaster. But only three Banes coming in with the initial attack, which is obviously not good for Strawberry. Oh, and as these links come forward, as long as there's no more Banes, this should be a pretty easy hold. All Flirt at least needs to do is just keep building some more Spines uh, and, and Drone up here and you could be okay. But unfortunately, look at the Worker advantage. Flirt at least just killed a lot of Drones to build all those buildings. Oh no, Flirt at least right clicked a Zergling again! Flirt at least is literally... Oh my god, can you guys imagine playing hundreds of StarCraft games and not realizing that right clicking on enemy units is bad? They're doing it again! They've just done it again! Oh my god, they're only winning these fights because they have 10 times the numbers! Flirtelise is doing some of the worst micro I've ever seen in my life. Look, every fight, almost every fight, at least at least half of them, you can see all the Zerglings are clicked on an enemy Zergling. It's a huge mistake that Flirtelise just keeps on making here, and it's making their life so difficult. Um, oh my lord. Okay, this queen out in the open, bit of a mistake for Straw Baby, but they pull back, back away, the queen barely survives. Uh, Flirt Elise is up to 38 workers. If Flirt Elise, honestly, just full walls and just builds gases and a Roach Warren, could be winning this game quite hard. But neither player is transitioning right now. They are both staring at their Zerglings. <gasps> Come on, just just go around with your Zerglings. Your wall off will defend itself. You got to... Actually, will it? Mass Baneling could still bust through because this wall's so bad. Trying to build spines in front of the wall as well as behind it, but they're still Omega clumped up. More Banelings and Zerglings are coming. Oh my god, just fundamentals of walling off, not quite there. An Evo here, and, uh, or actually an Evo there, and then a Queen here. Move those two spines back, and it's unbreakable. But as it is, the Baneling's gonna go for the spines. The, a hole is opened right there, and that gives massive surface area. Ooh, Floridalise needs to A-move the drones, but it's taking way too long. The Zerglings also aren't doing anything in the corner of the map. Man, low-level ZBZ has to be one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Nothing. <laughs> the Zerglings gonna fight, take down these drones. That's unfortunate for Flirtelise that they didn't bring back the rest of their Zerglings. Because GG Pussy, I wish I knew it was all ins. You were on less drones and did the more aggressive uh, build for most of this game until that final attack. Strawberry says, GG. That's fine. All right, I'll give you the GG, whatever. That's also not a wall. There's a bit of a gape over there, mate. You'll need a third Evo up here or something to block that side before when that Evo goes down. Uh, Flirt at least still forgetting about the Zergs in the corner. Is trying to get a Spire up, but isn't quite there. The Lings are attacking. I mean, honestly, it's it's it, whichever player just decided to actually commit to the attack while massing units better was always going to win this game. But uh, eventually, after five, six, seven minutes of just derping around, Strawbaby has committed. And that's what's going to win the game. Just actually being decisive and aggressive. I wouldn't even call it decisive. I would say being slightly less pedantic about committing to the attack. And it's going to get it done. Strawberry's going to get in. Even with five meters coming out, I don't think you stop this wave. This Ling Bane will be able to smash through for sure. Strawberry's going to try and blow the way through the wall and see how it goes. Here we go. Ling Bane, try to get through. Try to get through. Oh, oh, there we go. The Bane Ling's are going to clear through. Now the Ling's just need to run past the wall and get into the main. I think Strawberry's got it. Being a bit of a pussy here with this all in. If only Florida least knew. Knew it was just a pussy all in, man. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. That's just the way my cat plays StarCraft, you know? Hopefully no one shoots you in the head for being an insult. Oh my god, you psychopath. Wow, dude, dude. Come on, mate. You're playing Silver League ZVZ. You can't be that mad. Uh, I would had to lose another one. Wait, I would hate to lose another one of you? Because their other incel friends got shot? I don't... Un I don't... I, 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 once again, I'm left speechless uh, as uh, people who are really, really bad at video games tend to be the angriest. I mean, there really is a direct relationship, isn't there? The people who really just have no idea what they're doing are the ones who never fix the basic mistakes. Because always at the end of the game, it's not, oh, my Warloff was shit. 
my build order was shit. I wasn't spending my love for the whole early game. It's, it's always, if I just knew it was an all-in, I could have done this. But it's like, well, no, no, no. You knew your opponent was being aggressive. You built a giant wall, blocked the attack, and then you just left two giant holes in it with spine crawls where you, all you needed to do was do a proper wall off with evos and queens that aren't so vulnerable to banelings. Flirt at least, living in the land of delusion, probably won't be getting much better at the game, but I mean, that's just the way it is, man. We all feel rage when something happens in the game that surprises us or catches us off guard. We all feel a bit angry and feel like it's unfair. You gotta fight that. Keep that emotion under control and actually look for things that you can do better. Otherwise, you will stay bad. GG, straw baby. All right, going into the next one, we've got Old Man in the bottom left and in the top right, Abyss Walker. It's a TVP. Abyss Walker starts with, how old are you? Old Man says, good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun for both of them. Old Man says, 37. Oh, shiz, says Abyss Walker. I'm 31. You are older than me. So Abyss Walker, for those who don't know, is the equivalent. So you guys know there's cat and dog years. Well, there's also gamer years. 31 is the equivalent of 73 in gamer years. Uh, 37 is actually above the average life expectancy of a gamer. That is, of course, uh, 88. So old man really is an old man in terms of gaming years. Uh, surprised he's still here hanging on for dear gaming life. I was going to say I beat you to it, says uh, Avis Walker. You see, I'm not an old man. I am the old man. <laughs> Avis Walker says lol. <laughs> this is great. You know, it's been kind of funny today because we've had such like generic insults game. And I feel like today's episode is almost like we're going through everything we've experienced this year in Salt Mines. It's my YouTube handle as well, says old man. Ooh, maybe we'll look up old man's YouTube channel at the end of this game, hey? My kids made me make one when I was recovering from surgery. Okay. All right, we're hearing the life story. I like it. I like it. It's one of those things where like you're so used to hanging around young people and then you, you finally hang around an old person and you realize you're going to hear their whole life story and it's kind of fantastic. Um, you know, they're just so, so much more friendly and talkative, you know? Yeah, you run into them in the grocery store when across the road. They start telling you about their kids and their pet dogs and their grandkids and whatever else. Abyss Walker says, hey, nice. So you have kids? He did just imply he has kids, Abyss Walker, but it's okay. It's hard to keep up with this level of intensity in the conversation. I know we're not used to it, us young uns. We don't talk to people anymore. Old man, much more used to it. Old man says, I, oh, two? Yeah, I've got two kids. Abyss Walker says, I don't think I want... <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm 34 now. I don't, I don't have any little rugrats yet. I, for me, um, I would, I, I don't think I'd be, I don't think it's a responsible decision. Abbas Walker says it's too much money. Ah, okay, yeah, that's, that's also a good one. For me, it's more that like, I think, I feel like I might forget to like feed them or something. I might just forget to take care of them sometimes, you know? I wouldn't do it intentionally, but like, I'm just not sure I'd be good at it, you know? Uh, my boy is almost 13 and is awesome. Not lying, says old man. Heck yeah. I bet he is, says Abyss Walker. Okay, guys, is, is it, I don't think there's any salt in this game. This one's just straight up, uh, especially if he plays games with you, says Abyss Walker. I, I bet he's awesome. But here we go. Okay, guys, it's been all friendly words and stories until the old man just backhands the probes of Abyss Walker. Abyss Walker didn't have any units. His cybercore is like a minute late right now in this game. It's such a late cybercore. That's wild. He's going to chrono a zealot. Oh, no. Oh, this Reaper's going in. I feel like if you just A-move half the probes and leave the other half mining and go back to doing your stuff, that would probably be a better result. This Reaper's doing three kills. You know what's funny, though? Terran's floating 500 minerals. So even with this Reaper going, who's got 2k bloody, uh, what are they called? P45 gas pistols and doesn't give a shit. He's going around bang, bang, bang. But is it useful micro when you're floating this much money at home? He's building SCVs, so he's queuing up more SCVs with his control group as old man. But I don't know if it's worth it, you know? Is it worth it? Does he get the zealot? Oh, the probe's around! Final revenge for Abyss Walker. Now, if Abyss Walker just steeps building probes and chronoing them, you've got two next eye and can definitely get ahead because you are, you know, you're able to explode in that economy. And remember, there was a lot of money floating. Old man's kind of slow on the follow-up tech, so it doesn't have any follow-up aggression. Unfortunately, Abyss Walker is not building a single probe. It's the classic, I messed up, so I'm going to make more mistakes. No, Abyss Walker, why are you making a Stargate add to Twilight Castle? Finally starts building probes about 20, 30 seconds later. It's going to go for another Zealot Adept Counter Pressure. Could do some damage with that, maybe, but the Zealot's very, very low. Um, Stargate and Twilight at the same time. Definitely something that is interesting. No probes building! Yeah, we do Fortnite. Says, oh, we're back to the... Oh, he plays games. The old man says, yeah, we do Fortnite. I like it, guys. He spelled Fortnite correctly for the word incorrectly for the game as well. 
That's a true oldie. I got him an X space box for Christmas. See if we can do Warzion. Yeah, good man. Old man's typing in chat while defending Zelda debt pressures. This old man's got skills. I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a local uh, community hall or a place where people play table tennis. If you haven't, holy crap, you got to go down there. Play some of that ping pong, play some of that table tennis. There will always be an elderly Asian man who looks so goddamn frail until he picks up that racket. And then is it a racket? Is it a paddle? Whatever you call it. <laughs> he picks it up and you think this guy can barely move and he destroys everybody while barely moving his body. And you're like, my God. Very cool, Sadabus Walker. Uh, that Reaper did some damage. He was hired by Too Tough Tony. Old man has law behind his Reaper. He was hired by Too Tough Tony, man. <laughs> That's... Ah. This is what I love about the ladder adventures for people out there, man. Abyss Walker really needs to queue up like 10 probes right now. The latest Oracle of all time is coming out, as is Charge. And a third base, but Abyss Walker's biggest problem is just not holding the probe key down right now. And that's why he's down 10 workers. Too Tough Tony is the guy who runs the union that mining. Oh, okay. He's a, he's a regular Too Tough Tony. He's like the Tony Soprano of uh, of the Caprulu sector, huh? Of Masara, maybe, or whatever uh, world Tropical Sacrifice is meant to be on. Liberator coming in could do some real damage, man. There's nothing that shoots up right now. Gonna need to warp some stalkers in over here. Let's see how quick Abyss Walker does respond. Abyss Walker is not responding. Says, I will never financially recover. I think talking about the Reaper harass, but it's it's really this Liberator harass that's starting to add up. Now, seven kills. No Stalker warp-ins. I'm so sorry about it all. The Stalkers are now warping in. They're going to they're gonna try to get in there. Oh, there's a big Marine Marauder tank attack. The Stalkers are not going in the right direction at all either. Where are they going? No. Oracle's going to fly in and turn on its laser. That'll do some good damage. You just can't fuck with Tony, says old man. Ah, I don't know if there's any salt to this game, but there is very entertaining shit talk coming out of old man right now. Our geriatric Starcrafter coming in and stutter stepping all over the face of these probes. Abyss Walker's got to like six gateways, but just doesn't have it. So there's too much talk. God damn it. So, uh, of course, getting a bit distracted. I've had it happen as well. Nicely played, old man. You may not have been as fast as my hands. Actually, you were faster than me. But uh, you distracted me with your words. You used the psychological warfare the way the old men do. That's exactly it. They use control better. They look for weaknesses. They analyze the strategy better. Take care and happy holidays, says Abyss Walker. Oh, okay. Okay. I get it. That was our final game for today. That's our final game for literally the entire year of the salt mines. An old man types, you too, good sir, after Abyss Walkers left the game. <laughs> That's adorable. <clears throat> he doesn't know. He doesn't know that he can't see those messages. Oh, what a way to wrap up 2022. You know, we've had too many crazy people like in that second game. Oh, God, I hope you get shot. Tell me your address. I want to come, want to come punch you in the face. You know, people just say all these dumb, angry things, but it's nice to have a little bit of banter. In a game where neither player seem to shit uh, or, or get too angry too bad. No no, no shitting the bed directly, at least. Uh, I would say economically, if Abyss Walker just kept building probes, maybe. Uh, definitely the Cybercore being a solid bit at late hurt. But, you know, there's just something nice about people being able to have a nice back and forth. And Abyss Walker is, like, probably a bit annoyed with the too much talk, getting caught by the Liberator and then the push. But then said, you know what? Nicely played, old man. Take care and happy holidays. That there is a beautiful way to finish off Salt Mines for 2022. Thank you everyone who's joined us on this journey with this new show. Big thanks to everyone who keeps on uh, sending in replays. And just a massive thanks to everyone for your support. I hope you all have a fantastic holidays. And a big thanks for everyone who's on our Patreon right now. A special thanks to Jacob. Uh, oh, over here, sorry. Jacob, Maxan, and everyone else who's in all of those levels. If you guys do enjoy the show, want to check out the Patreon, links down below in the description. But otherwise, enjoy your holidays. I hope you have a fantastic end of the year and a great start to 2023. Much love, everybody. Goodbye and good night.